Three, two, no. one. The woman is just sitting in the middle of thousands of hats. They gave us this tea for free, but they just wanted to basically give us a gesture to say thank you. Yeah, so you say cafe da. Cafe da. Coca-Cola kun. 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 Oh. Ciao, boy sang, but no. Good morning, everybody. I hope I said that one correctly. We just arrived late last night into Hanoi, Vietnam, and we're super, super excited to be exploring a new country. So join us as we are exploring Hanoi for the very, very first time. Let's go eat something, let's buy some things, have a look around, see what the city has to offer. So guys, this here is the West Lake of Hanoi, and this is actually the area that we are currently staying in. And hello everybody, welcome to our very first day of exploring Vietnam. Uh, if you guys don't know us, my name is Luke and that was Naomi that you just listened to as well. Uh, we're the two mad explorers and we're very very excited to be in a new country. We are so pumped and stoked to try a whole bunch of new food and meet the locals as well. This is the stuff that we truly live for coming to a new country and Vietnam is a place that has been on our bucket list now for a very very long time we've wanted to come to Vietnam now for years literally ever since we started traveling and we have been blessed with some amazing sunshine here on the West Lake and right now we're gonna walk from the West Lake area towards the old quarter of Hanoi because that's what we like to do on our first day of exploring new cities is head to the popular areas, see the popular things, get that out of the way and then we can really dive into the real deeper parts of Vietnam and of Hanoi. But yeah guys, the West Lake, sprawling, beautiful. There's actually people walking waist deep in the lake right now, picking out things. I don't know what exactly they're looking for. And off in the distance, you can see a little bit of the foggy skyline of Hanoi because, wow, we arrived last night and it was very cold and that's why we have long sleeves actually. Mm -hmm. But today it's like 30 degrees. Yeah, it seemed like from one day to the next, it kind of changed weather uh, and temperatures very, very rapidly. So last night when we arrived, it was like, I want to say 15 degrees, 17 degrees, something like that. Quite cold, actually. And uh, today it's supposed to be going all the way up to 33 degrees. So it feels like one day it's spring and the next day it's... Uh... How rude to interrupt me like this. <laughs> <laughs> We've never been uh, so far northeast within... Asia. Now we have been exploring a lot of South Asia, a lot of Southeast Asia, and I mean Vietnam still belongs to Southeast Asia, but it's sort of very close to China and we've never been so close to China. So this is our very, very first time being this close and um, the weather here seems to be a little bit different. Uh, now obviously the further east you go uh, at this time of the year might still be snow and so on. So that's probably why um, it's getting quite cold during the night time here but yeah we cannot wait to actually have a look around this beautiful city because check this out it's so stunning this building here as well it looks like very very luxurious and uh, you have this sort of little park in front with these like fitness equipment that Luke was already using that seems to be sort of the theme of the West Lake everywhere you go you seem to be having fitness equipment that is available for use for everybody and uh, I think that's really really cool it kind of uh, deletes the need for a gym maybe if uh, some of these might even have some weights I'm not sure if we are going to have a look around and maybe see some of these workout areas with weights and I think you don't even need a gym anymore <laughs> One thing that we're gonna have to get used to here in Hanoi is the population and the traffic that is caused by that large population. There's roughly around five to five and a half million people in the city of Hanoi. And uh, these people, a lot of them go around on scooters. So you see scooters literally everywhere you go, whether that's parked on the side of the road, like you can see up here on this side. 
you'll see scooters nearly on every sort of uh, sidewalk or walking path all along the street and nearly everybody is driving one too so it's something that you really have to get used to especially when you're crossing the street here uh, what we found so far the best thing is something that we've been using for a long time in Asia and that is just basically to signal to the people with your hand that you want to cross over but yeah that seems to be the best practice but it is very hectic very chaotic and a little bit overwhelming at the start but I will say this Hanoi does not seem to be a very loud city people don't overly use their horn we've been to a couple of larger cities like Jakarta in Indonesia for example and uh, people are very fond of honking their horns in places like that like places like Mumbai as well Mumbai definitely changed uh, our opinion on <laughs> everything to do with traffic ever since we were there but Hanoi definitely seems to be even though it is a large population and busy traffic it seems to be a little bit more laid back and uh, domesticated I want to say very chill I just tested out my very minimal uh, Vietnamese skills. I just said cafe da xin chào, cafe da, so hello, uh, iced coffee. Uh, but I don't know how to say two, so you guys need to tell me how I'm... Oh, two da, da, Two, cafe da, two, yeah. I don't know how to say two, <laughs> so I'm just gonna say two. Um, I need to learn this one. But yeah, I've been trying to like get like the absolute basics in terms of Vietnamese, but it's a lot more difficult than you uh, think it would be. Uh, Luke says two is hi, so hi. would you then say hi cafe da or would you say cafe da hi? No idea. Okay, <laughs> we need to learn. <laughs> we have a lot to learn, yeah. <laughs> this here guys is the situation, so it's basically just on the side of the street. There's a couple of people selling some shoes as well. This is a great way to start off the day. First time trying Vietnamese coffee. So this is, uh, I'm very, very excited because a lot of people have told us the coffee in Vietnam and it's sort of renowned, renowned and known all over Europe that Vietnamese coffee is fantastic. Now we're actually going to try Vietnamese coffee here in the capital of Vietnam. Hey, you want sugar? Sugar? Uh, sugar. No, 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 no sugar. Ah, sugar. Yeah. <laughs> we don't like do sugar. sugar in I'm not sure. Yeah, we have we have a lot to learn in terms of the language guys uh, but we try we always try especially Naomi Naomi's a lot better than I am when it comes to learning the local languages of different places I'm terrible when it comes to language I always just resort to English which a lot of people actually speak here we found Hanoi to be amazing when it comes to that Duong 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 for it's sugar, sugar. Oh. Right guys, exactly what we were looking for. Black coffee, no milk, no sugar, with ice. Let's see how it is. Oh, my god. Strong. It's very, very strong. It's absolutely, like it's really tasty, but like you need to really like coffee if you want to order uh, just a black coffee with no sugar, no milk. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's really strong. It's like punch your bottom kind of strongness. You're just gonna be awake for the next 15 weeks approximately. <laughs> Let's give it a try. Yeah, that's that is strong coffee, guys. It's really gonna wake us up. It's perfect. It's the morning time here, and uh, this it's almost like kind of like a, just like a black sludge of thick caffeinated goodness. Cheers to everybody that's watching. So excited for a new series here in Vietnam. This is exceptionally strong. It's so strong. So strong. <laughs> but the flavor of it is nice. It's not it's not very bitter. I it think it's not taste. bitter. In the beginning I thought it might be like Nescafe or something like that, but I don't think it is. I think it's like just genuine black coffee uh, made with beans and powder or yeah, <laughs> whatever yeah. like ground up coffee beans um, because in a lot of a lot of Asian countries you usually get like a Nescafe like instant coffee type of thing but this one doesn't taste instant at all yeah and uh, this stand here is really amazing because they seem to be selling things like banh mi and uh, obviously coffee and a couple of other different items as well 
but this is uh, the perfect way, I think, to start today here in Hanoi. And now we're just gradually getting closer to the old quarter, which is like the main, main uh, touristic area. And once we get there, we're gonna try a whole bunch of different things. I have a whole bunch, a whole list of different food that we wanna try. And uh, we also wanna check out the market as well, I think. Uh, Naomi is looking for some leggings and I'm gonna look for some possibly some new shoes, trainers, t-shirts, stuff like that. We have a lot of things to check out in the old quarter and obviously give you guys our honest first impressions here of Hanoi. To give you a quick idea about how much we just paid for the two iced coffees on the side of the road, it was 40,000 dong for two so um, just to give a little bit of an idea about how the conversion works i believe per euro it's like one euro is twenty six thousand dong and i believe a dollar is like twenty four thousand dong or something like that uh, don't quote me on this this was like two weeks ago when i checked the last time but it was like just under i want to say two euro for uh, two 75 cents per coffee 75 cents per coffee 150 on the side of the road. Now obviously uh, I'm sure you can do this a lot fancier if you go to like a nice cafe, uh, sit down somewhere. I'm sure you also pay a lot more in those settings but if you just sit on the side of the road you get pretty affordable stuff here that is really good quality and uh, wow I'm really happy with this. I'm very happy, I'm very caffeinated and I'm ready now to go and uh, check out what the old quarter of Hanoi has to offer. So far very positively surprised by Hanoi and by Vietnam in general. Local people are very warm, very kind, and that lady in the coffee shop was fantastic. Oh, I said the streets were quiet, and now they're proving me wrong. <laughs> I think they were trying to get you out of the way. <laughs> very fascinating structure here in the center, and a very fascinating architecture all around the city of Hanoi. And that has to do with the history of Vietnam. Now, Vietnam, like many, many countries around Asia, has a very colonial history. Many, many countries have passed through here, including the French and the Chinese, just to name a few. But you can definitely see in some of the architecture around the city, remnants of that colonial past. And wow. This statue here in the center was marked with the year 1946, which I believe was the year after or the year uh, that Vietnam actually had its constitution written. Very, very incredible. And I'm very, very excited to be standing here. Just being here is amazing. And we're very close now to where we're supposed to be headed, which is this whole section here. This is the old quarter of Hanoi. And this is where all of the action is gonna be happening. Yes, guys, welcome to the old streets of Hanoi. And these guys here in these carts that are cycling around, that's how you know, I think, that you're in the old part of the town. They are quite literally everywhere. And you'll see a lot of tourists sitting in the carts and being wheeled around the city. For us, we always prefer to stay on our feet and to walk around. And Hanoi is the perfect city to walk around and get lost in. This is a true paradise for you if you want to just get lost somewhere. Just have a look at this. Oh, look at the watermelons. Oh, watermelon. Xin chào. <laughs> With the carts, I'm also not sure if we would even fit. I think we would probably need two carts because we're quite uh, tall and uh, white and uh, foreigner-esque. Let's say it like that. And um, ooh, look at all the lanterns. How pretty are those lanterns? Wow. They're really cool with like the different textiles. Some of them look like they're covered with uh, satin or something like that. Anyway, I'm, I'm really wondering if you guys have any experience with these uh, card man <laughs> if uh, do you, like how much you actually have to pay or if it's like even worth doing it if you guys have any idea about that maybe it uh, would be good if you would let us know because I think it's like a quite a cool mode of transportation but I don't know if it's like uh, maybe a little bit overpriced or even worth it I don't know if you get any information out of the driver so that would be very interesting to know wow check out the giant Buddha there 
It's made out of like some, it looks like some sort of a precious stone. Really cool. <laughs> Luke is about to buy some uh, Chinese. <laughs> Very beautiful. <laughs> wow. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Oh, I can't get over how happy and friendly the locals are here. Everybody that we speak to, uh, look at just look at this. Look at how fuzzy the fuzzy toys across the road. Uh, everybody around here, very very easy to speak to. Even though there is quite yeah. often a language barrier, so like a lot of people that we do meet, there is a language barrier. They don't have the best English, but they always try. And we are gonna have to start trying in Vietnamese as well. Ahead of the dragon. Oh yeah, I love it. Very unique uh, city, and I'm I, from what it seems like. It seems like Hanoi is a shopping paradise, literally. And if you are good at haggling prices, this might be a real, a really amazing place. There's a guy on the cart over here shouting over at us to come and get in. Oh guys, we found a Ban Mui, Ban Mui Quang. And they have basically from 1 to 15, a whole bunch of different options. Which and it kind of like starts off at the cheapest and works its way up depending on what you want. I really want to try one that has pate. You want to go pate and ham maybe? I think pate and ham might be a good option. And I go pate and sausage. Pate and sausage and pate and ham, yeah? yeah. Number four and number six. And, uh, and we'll get a, a Coca Cola or something, or something as well. Oh. Oh. Yes. Very hot. Ah, very hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one. Number uh, number four and, and number six. Yes. Okay. And Come now, on. Yeah. Do you want a water or Coca Cola? Uh, one Coca Cola, one water. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 How you say cool da? Uh, yeah, yeah, Coca Cola da. <laughs> cold. <laughs> da is cold or ice? Ice. 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 Oh. Da. Okay. Da. 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 Oh. Da. Cool. Ma. Vietnamese. Ma. Ma. Cool. Cool. Ma. Translate in Vietnamese. Ma. Oh, cold. Oh, cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, I. Translate in Vietnamese. Da. Da. Yes. da. So you say cafe da. Cafe da. But Coca Cola kun. 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 Oh. Kun is uh, inside uh, fridge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. The ice with the ice. With ice. Oh. Yeah, with ice and, uh, put it mm. Yes, put it And hot is n nong. 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 I think. Nong. 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 <laughs> no. Because you spell N O N G. Yeah. I'm not sure how to say N O N G. N O N G. No. It's like a question. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, number four. That's yours. Number four. Yeah. Come on. Ooh. Very, very exciting, guys. Have not had a ban me yet and uh, I've heard so much about them I've genuinely I've never even had one outside of Vietnam believe it or not uh, I am very familiar with the whole like French baguette in Ireland uh, there's a very popular thing that's called a chicken fillet roll where you get like a fresh French baguette and you load it with chicken and whatever else that you want to put in there so that's the only equivalent that I can come up with in my head that might be somewhat close to it. But this here looks incredible. So it's a banh mi that's absolutely loaded with, from what it looks like, pick, pickled vegetables. And you also obviously have, you can see a layer here of pate. And then you also have the meat as well, which I decided to go for ham. And then uh, it's also packed full of different sauces as well and I've no idea what to expect. The roll itself is very crispy and warm 
and it's going to be a perfect bite. And paired with the Coca-Cola, I'm very excited. Let's give it a try. white bread roll as well it has that like chew chewy texture on the inside I cannot get over the flavor of this the ham as well a little bit on the spicy side pickled vegetables contrast against the ham you have the pate the liver pate which is really really just nice and flavorful what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna open this up I'm gonna add a little bit of, well they have uh, what looks to be ketchup, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go straight for, they have a chili sauce here. You can see some chilies and uh, it looks to be like a gar garlic uh, chili sauce. So I'm gonna just put a dabble of that in there for my next bite. And we'll see if it adds maybe a little bit of heat to it because Naomi and I are heat lovers, we love spicy food, so if we can have a spicy version of this, it would be the perfect food for us. <laughs> Some banh mi ASMR. Also a lot of garlic flavor as well. It made the sandwich even better. The quality of the bread here is perfect. It's literally like a European standard of bread. Very flaky. It's nice and freshly baked as well. And I'm absolutely in love with this. And it's decently sized too. Price-wise, it's a euro. It's 25,000. This is one euro. The equivalent roll something like this that you would get in Ireland as of 2024 you're gonna be looking at maybe six or seven euros so maybe six or seven times the price easily and if you pair it with a coca-cola that's another two or three euro you're looking at like almost 10 euro just for this whereas here it's gonna be less than than two probably so this is amazing I've been just looking at my bun meat the entire time, I so cannot <laughs> wait to actually try it. I got the one with the pate and sausage meat. Have a look at this bad boy. I'm just going to try and open it up like this. So you see um, all of the meat, then you have a large cucumber and also pickled, ve pickled uh, vegetables. Same as looks basically, let's just give it a try the way it is. Hmm. It's really good. It's amazing. <laughs> mm. How do you say tasty, delicious? Yeah. How do you say it? Say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make a video. Yeah. For what? For YouTube. Huh? YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube for uh, in uh, what field? Uh, travel. Tra travel. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. We try try the food yeah, and meet people. You, you have a uh, channel. Channel, channel. Yeah, yeah. I can give for you. Yeah. Yeah. To say that. I will uh, subscribe. Yeah. All channel. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. I just added the spicy sauce. Really good. Hit, hit me a uh, five uh, star. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Really, really tasty. If you want to know where we are right now, we are at Daily Bread Ban Mi Quang. Ban Mi Quang. In uh, Huan Kiem, Hanoi. <laughs> I don't know how to say that properly. I'm very sorry. <laughs> you say uh, delicious in Vietnamese is En Gon. Yeah. En Gon. Uh, en A little bit. Yeah. I want my boss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
cái cửa hàng của mình ok như xây uh, xây uh, phiêu um, in my uh, my 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 shop yeah ok yeah. very good very tasty yeah, yeah. cheers cheers <laughs> cheers <laughs> Yeah. Oh I my god! Yeah. <laughs> Come on! Make from uh, make make from uh, tea tree in yeah. Taiwan province, Vietnam. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's very special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They gave us this tea for free. But they just wanted to basically give us a gesture to say thank you, and it's amazing. This tea is very very strong, very very tasty. It smells so unique as well. Mm. It smells like a fruit, like peach. Yeah. But it like doesn't taste like peach. Peachy lemon sort mm. of a smell. Really good. We saw a lot of people actually when we were walking along the West Lake that they were drinking a drink of tea that was similar color. It's kind of a yellow, dark yellow color. And I was wondering what exactly it was, but that's what it is. It's this tea. Seems to be pretty popular. You can taste it has a lot of caffeine. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be running around Hanoi after this. We're gonna be super fast. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. Come on, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> in Vietnam, please come back. Yeah, of yes, course. Of course. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Come yeah. in. Thank you so much. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm waiting for you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Super nice people, and uh, for uh, two bun mis. Uh, one Coca-Cola and one water, we spent 75,000 uh, dong, which is 2 euro 70, I believe. 2 euro 80. You have to be so careful here with the, with the scooters. And uh, we also got the tea for free on top of it. Now, uh, we've never tried this tea before. I'm not 100% what kind of uh, plant it's made of. He said it's like a tea tree. Something about it growing on a tree. Uh, but the taste of it was incredibly strong. So as soon as you drink it, it just clears out your throat. And it had a very strong taste of like basically like a peachy lemon. I don't know how to even properly describe it. I felt, I felt like it had a scent of peachy lemon, but it didn't taste like peachy lemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> sorry, it smelled like it. It didn't actually taste like it. It tasted more of like a herbal tea. What? Very, very unique, and they wanted to give it to us for free. Um, so we're very, very grateful to them. And we literally just sat and had a chat with them for a good half an hour. So yeah. the people of Vietnam are amazing. He even downloaded WhatsApp so that we can stay in touch. Uh, I think we're gonna go back there more often because uh, it's very good by me and uh, very affordable and the people are nice. So yeah, we're gonna go there probably more often. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome to Hoan Kim Lake. And over here you have a beautiful red bridge just behind this gorgeous looking tree here and this is probably one of the most picturesque places that we've seen so far in Hanoi. It looks incredible. It's a very touristy. We're coming across so many tourists around this area and this is kind of like the central point of the old quarter I guess you could say. And like I said this beautiful red bridge over here seems to be leading towards some sort of a temple and that's what we're about to bring you guys next. Yeah, this entire old town area seems to be really sort of the main um, tourist zone basically of Hanoi from what it seems like anyway. And uh, in this little lake here as well by the way, uh, right now of course because I'm standing so close to the water they left but there's, if you see something orange here it's a lot of little sort of uh, orange goldfish type of fish in this uh, lake which is very cool to see and uh, I believe in order to access this bridge and the temple on the other side I think you have to buy tickets somewhere here no idea uh, how expensive those tickets actually are if, like how much we will have to pay for it but uh, I'm just gonna have a look and try and understand how much it is and uh, then take you across the bridge to actually see what it's like crossing because you don't really see a whole lot of uh, locals crossing it seems to be like a main tourist thing to do let's say it like that and uh, of course we are tourists here in Hanoi so we are going to be doing some of the tourist things as well wow so we made our way here onto this red bridge that we were just talking about and in order to get in here we had to obviously buy entrance tickets so 
cost is 50,000 dong per person and that basically covers your entrance onto the bridge and then onto the Ngok Sun Temple. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But wow, really beautiful view here and kind of like a panoramic view of old Hanoi. This is absolutely breathtaking. I think the 50k alone is actually kind of worth it if you just take in this view here and it's a great picture opportunity for social media as well. There's a really cool uh, smaller island there as well with what seems to look like an image shrine. It's a little bit further in the distance but the island over there doesn't seem to be accessible for the public whereas this one very obviously is accessible and uh, yeah this is so nice it's a very good picture opportunity here no? beautiful we're yeah. gonna be snapping a lot of pictures here we feel like tourists for once which is different very picturesque and beautiful temple here guys i can tell you already it's definitely worth the entrance fee of 50k this is a uh, very well kept and very beautiful place here in the center of Huan Kim Lake. Managed to walk into the temple. I'm going to be whispering from now on because I don't feel like uh, disturbing anybody in case they're doing uh, an offering or praying. Oh, over there it actually says please no camera so <laughs> maybe I'm just gonna stay in this area and you can have a look at it from here. Um, it's very very beautiful to look at. You have a lot of the red and the golds obviously. A lot of offerings as you can see from here maybe there in the in the distance. A lot of people bring like water and cookies and tea and stuff like that. Some people bring flowers and the um, pomelos and this uh, citrus fr fruit called uh, Buddha's hand. You see a lot of Buddha's hand here, which we haven't seen in other Southeast Asian countries so much, um, which is very, very interesting to see. One second, I'm gonna show you a Buddha's hand actually, in case uh, you might not know what it looks like here. The, this one here, that's a Buddha's hand. Um, so it just looks like sort of a lot of individual fingers. And um, yeah, very cool temple Amazing. to be. Unbelievable, it's very like, luxurious looking and very pristine hmm. I haven't seen a temple actually that is just spotlessly this clean in a while hmm. back outside we're able to appreciate the views of the temple itself but also outside of this very nice looking pavilion you have incredible views over the lake yeah. itself and uh, that little island that I was talking about from the bridge, <laughs> which is very, very beautiful to look at from here. Wow. It's so interesting to see that you have this contrast in between uh, a religious institution such as this temple and this entire island. And then uh, you have obviously the business sector, banking sector sort of over there. Um, up in this direction, I believe, is the old town. And uh, then you have all of the like beautiful cafes and sort of some market vendors all around this lake, uh, which I find so cool to see that there are so, so many people coming here um, to visit Hanoi, to experience the old town, um, to take all of the beautiful tours that you can do through this crazy vibrant city. And uh, yeah, I don't know, my first impressions of Hanoi are already very very positive now obviously you do have a lot of foreigners here it's very well traveled I want to say but uh, for us as the first entry point into Vietnam I feel like it's a very suitable first entry point to not be overwhelmed uh, with the culture but actually just take like a slow approach and understand the culture a little bit better before uh, submerging ourselves into the countryside I want to say Wow we've just made it to the main sort of uh, market street in uh, the old town of Hanoi and uh, as you can already see you can buy loads of <laughs> uh, t-shirts uh, that are Vietnam themed and also sort of some uh, foreign brands like North Face, Adidas and so on but uh, surprisingly enough a lot of the apparel here seems to be geared towards a colder climate so you can really see that for the last few days or weeks it has been quite cold um, a lot of the things that you can buy here are like fleece jackets and 
long uh, hiking or trekking pants, these are like, really thick uh, jackets and hoodies and so on, which obviously you now today maybe a little bit less people will buy or maybe some people will buy it to take them home uh, with them to wherever they're from probably no I was saying that the thicker jackets are probably not so much bought today because of how hot it is but usually probably it's hotter than today uh, colder yeah it is uh, <laughs> very very hot today guys and this whole entire street here is quite literally jam-packed full of things to check out and buy now the most popular things seem to be North Face and Patagonia now that has a lot to do with the fact that North Face is actually produced in Vietnam, I believe. So you will find a lot of different North Face branded t-shirts, jackets, bags, everything like that. And this here is kind of the main shopping street in the old quarter where you can find a lot of different jackets. You'll see you tourists haggling with vendors over the cost of jackets and bags and pretty much anything you can think of. This is the place to come and we're gonna sort of tag it for you guys just so you know if you haven't been to Hanoi already uh, we will tag this down below in the description but you can literally walk for a good few kilometers and there's quite literally nothing but uh, clothing to check out it's amazing I would say as well if you do come to Hanoi or like Asia in general um, a lot of times the first stores that you see in those types of market streets are usually the most expensive because obviously they are getting the most amount of uh, walk-in customers because at the beginning everybody is excited and at the end of the street everybody is not so excited so um, a lot of times uh, don't hit up the first store just walk all the way through the end and try and hit up the last store you might get a better bargain at the last store than you would maybe at the first store because uh, or maybe in a side street where nobody walks past <laughs> I think the number one thing in Vietnam when it comes to clothing sometimes you'll see signs that say no haggling but I think the number one thing here is you need to have a backbone and you need to be able to haggle people and you need to be able to push especially when it comes to specific clothing like if you're going for fake clothing or first copy clothing you need to be able to push and haggle the prices down because they're always going to start at a price that is significantly higher than what you're gonna want in the first place yeah. uh, so i think we're going to find that out first hand very soon here as well because there's a couple of different things that we want to look at like t-shirts and leggings and stuff like that and uh, we're going to try and show you the interactions that we have also don't be scared to walk away don't feel obliged to buy something just because you enter the store um, if somebody is saying way too much money or uh, way too high of a price then uh, make sure to start nice and low and uh, if you're not getting the price that you want walk away go to the next shop usually a lot of the places are selling sort of similar things sometimes even the exact same things so maybe you will find it somewhere else for a cheaper price but yeah let's have a look at the market street we found a store that has a good looking price decent selection of t-shirts as well and they have a uh, foreigner size I'm pretty tall uh, for a European so I need like oversized t-shirts and something I always have an issue with in Asia is finding t-shirts that fit me a lot of times I'll pick up a t-shirt and it literally will like come down to my belly button so mm -hmm. but these ones look like they're big this enough. is 3XL oh this looks like it's too big for you it's actually kind of baggy no it's a yeah it's, it's a little bit hip-hop if you if you were to wear this <laughs> you have uh, two XL this one is three this one three it's big uh, what color? Uh, black, black yeah. also I think the Under Armour ones look quite uh, nice as well Under Armour is really nice I also some Under Armour stuff yeah I love the North Face the North Face Not this color but like a different color oh, what about white white is nice <laughs> an extra large That's extra large Oh, it's stuck to the thing. Hold on. It's a anti-theft device. Anti-theft. Well, I surpassed it. Oh, there's also Adidas. Excellent. Yeah. yeah, looks good. Actually, looks pretty good. No? Why don't you? I don't know. Is there a? Can you try it on? I'm sure you can. Naomi forms full sentences. What? 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 what, 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 what. <laughs> um, this one here, but it, this is 4XL. It's an Adidas, though. Maybe inside yeah. they have Adidas. 
like two XL. Great. Three XL. You're able to try it try on? Yeah? Oh. You can try it on inside. Sorry, I got all into the t-shirts. Is uh, filming okay? okay? It's okay. Uh -huh. Oh, you see. I was just talking about all of the thick jackets that you can buy here. Maybe not today, but uh, eventually next week. That's a nice north. Oh, those, this one, yeah, it's really nice. That's really nice. It's actually uh, very thin as well. It's like a windbreaker type of jacket. It's not necessarily like a thick one, but it's like a thin windbreaker for the rain. Don't even know how much this one is. It has no price. Maybe we should uh, ask for the price. Oh, this one is actually way nicer. I like the green color. Let's have a look at where Luke is going. The North Face uh, windbreaker, how much? The green one. <laughs> no, this this one, yes. You know how much? This? Four fifty. Four fifty. That's pretty nice. So guys, unfortunately, the t-shirt's a little bit too small. You have to be very careful with the sizing here when you try it on. Uh, if you are tall and broad-shouldered like I am, uh, make sure to try on the clothes because unfortunately, uh, they were a little bit too small. So the search continues, but I think they have some nice jackets anyways. So guys, just to give you an idea of Ban Mi, in the main tourist areas, the starting price here is between 30 and 40K. Whereas the one that we had in a more local area was 25,000 and it was jam packed full of stuff. So keep that in mind guys, when you're in the main touristy areas, like everywhere, you're always gonna pay more and the same applies for here in the center of Hanoi. Just look at how crazy this traffic is right now. You get to really see what I'm talking about with the scooters. I think all of the kids got off of school and also some people are off of work now, so it's sort of starting to uh, be more crowded slowly, slowly. Oh yeah. Wondering where this is going, like what is the max? Yeah. Absolutely chaotic. At this, at this time of the day, right now it's, it's early in the afternoon now, guys. Oh, look at the fruit. Beautiful. Let's see if we can test the skills of crossing the street. It's always like a litmus test when we arrive in a new Asian city and this street is chaos. I don't have an issue with the scooters. I have an issue with the like bicycle it's, yeah, it's tour thing is because the scooters are all going in one velocity but the tricycles are going very slow. So it's like you need to look at both uh, paces, both velocities. Ready? Okay. Three, two, no. one, go! Alrighty, that was easier than I thought. <laughs> people are people are luckily paying attention. You just have to keep moving at the same pace and be really confident about yourself. Yep. Fruit looks now. very nice. Yeah, the fruit looks great. Maybe on our way out. We made our way now to guys to this massive market here. I'm not sure of the name, but I'll drop it down below for you guys. But it is massive and it appears to just lead you inside. And out here, yes, there's plenty of fruit vendors as well. What's the name called? Chu Dong Xuan. Chu Dong Xuan Market. Dong Xuan Market. Nice. No idea if we're saying it uh, correctly or if we're butchering everything. <laughs> Let's head inside. As soon as you come inside, guys, you're greeted with everything. And I mean everything. So much bracelets, decorations. We even have bras over here. <laughs> um, and it seems to be a blend of absolutely everything that you can think of. Clothing, materials traditional Vietnamese hats and uh, yeah this is a very very cool setup and you are not short on choice but I'm sure you need to have some haggling skills haggling skills and it's also a little bit overwhelming you need really need to keep your cool it's a yeah. bit much at the beginning I can't get over how many hats they have here so Look. many hats 
Maybe we made it into a hot town or something. We're in hot town, yeah. Hot town. <laughs> the woman is just sitting in the middle of thousands of hats. Wow, very well lit. So you can definitely, um, luckily, see where you're going because it's a tight squeeze. Yeah. Heading up now to the second floor, guys. And what I was just saying is the, the market itself is only around three floors. Um, so in terms of size, it's not absolutely massive. But the thing that sort of stands out is the sheer volume of stuff. So you've got tons of bags, tons of hats, tons of everything, all under one roof. Incredible. Now we made it up here to a level where they seem to be selling women's clothing, women's coats and stuff like that. The market, by the way, is not only inside of this little market hall, but also all along the outside here, depending on uh, what you're looking for. So, for example, there uh, in the distance, you can see maybe uh, th there's some people who are selling fruit and nuts and so on as well. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're maybe going to walk around a little bit more here, try and find some fruit and some nuts, maybe something for dinner later as well, and uh, just enjoy the evening, basically. But overall, what are your first impressions of Hanoi? Well, absolutely fallen in love with Hanoi so far guys to be honest this city is I didn't really expect it to be as nice as it is there's such a broad sort of uh, overwhelming outstanding sort of value that is on offer from this city mm -hmm. a lot of cities that we've explored over the sort of last couple of months and even uh, even in the last year or so the larger sort of capital cities have been actually a little bit on the underwhelming side uh, the last one that we would have experienced was Manila in the Philippines that was a positive experience it wasn't mm -hmm. exactly negative but here in Hanoi I'm genuinely blown away by how much I like this place People are very friendly, the food is fantastic and it's actually very hygienic. The market culture that exists here in Hanoi is unbelievable. Now, the only thing that I will say, and this is something that I was just talking to Naomi about and I think she agrees with me, it could be a little bit overwhelming if you are a first timer in Asia. So if this is your first place that you go to when you come to Asia as a European or an American, for example, it might be a little bit scary. But luckily for us, we've been traveling Asia for a while, so it's okay. Yeah, it's also one of those cities I feel like where um, it's actually predominantly Asian culture, actually Vietnamese culture and uh, not so much westernized. So it is, um, you know, a lot of the, the larger cities, in, in, especially in Southeast Asia, a lot of the signs are in English, a lot of the expl explanations are in English and so on. Um, that's not so much the case here, so you do have to sort of find your way around, maybe ask people and so on. Uh, so it's a little bit more of an interactive experience. Uh, that's why we're saying it might be a little bit overwhelming if this is your very first touch point uh, with Asia. Uh, Google Translate is your friend. Just make sure uh, you bring it with you and have a SIM card. 100% <laughs> guys, but there's a lot more Vietnamese adventures coming your way. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that for now. My name is Luke. My name is Naomi. We are the Two Mad Explorers. And this is your reminder to keep exploring. I'll see you guys in the next Vietnamese adventure. Come on for watching. Come on. Bye bye. bye. bye.